up guys the strong boys 19 here this is the next album review for the pink floyd discography and i apologize that i did not do a review for a bit of time because i was busy besides doing other videos but i'm going to be doing my personal take on pink floyd's 12th studio album entitled the final cut the final cut was released in 1983 and it is the follow-up to Pink Floyd's double album, The Wall, which came out five years prior to the final cut. One of Pink Floyd's biggest selling and most popular albums of all time. The original idea for the final cut was going to be a soundtrack for the 1982 film of The Wall under the working title called Spare Bricks. But since the events of the Argentina invasion conflict of the Falklands War had happened and with British Prime Minister at the time Margaret Thatcher's response calling it jingoistic and unnecessary Roger decided to change the whole soundtrack idea and decide to make another concept album and this was the only Pink Floyd album to not feature Richard Wright because he was fired from the band due to arguments and tensions between him and Waters themselves during the recording sessions of their previous album and this would become Pink Floyd's final album with Roger Waters before he left the band in 1985. This is another Pink Floyd album where Roger really pushes things up to the limits because his ego at this time was so much. This is an anti-war concept record that is lyrically based on the Falklands war conflict to the overall themes of the post-war dreams, second world war themes. And he describes this album as like the betrayal of his father who fought in the second world war and Roger dedicated this album to his father named Eric Fletcher Waters. The overall theme of this album, in my opinion, was really promising and compelling. The experience that I have with this album, I've played this album at least more than five times. And this is me being brutally honest. As an album, this is the biggest mix bag of any Pink Floyd album, but hear me out. This is not a terrible album. It's not one of the worst albums ever. It's not a classic album. It's not one of Pink Floyd's best albums. It's not one of the best records ever, but there are some positives which I will get to later on. Upon release, the album went to number one in the UK, and this unfortunately became Pink Floyd's lowest selling album since the album Medal. From the idea that Roger wanted to work on for this record is, as I said, promising, and I give Roger respect for this, but the overall recording process of this album was that difficult for Roger himself. So let's get on with the positives. The production is one of Pink Floyd's best produced albums. I really do love the sound of this. The guitar tone is amazing, especially the electric guitar tones when Gilmore does his signature lead guitar work. Sounds full and the distortion is very good, especially the drums. The drums have some punch and the orchestra, the national philharmonic orchestra that was involved in the studio they worked so hard and the sound of the orchestra is so damn beautiful and the overall experience of this album some of it reminds me of the wall because of its very deep and dark mood sound the songs themselves some of them are really really good like your possible pasts Paranoid Eyes, the title track, the final cut, Not Now John. Not Now John is the rockiest sounding track of the entire album. And this is the only one where Gilmore does lead vocals on, who does like a very, like a mean, aggressive attitude kind of sound and musically reminds me of Young Lust from The Wall. But a lot of the album is progressive in places, but some of them at the same time feel like very 
personal and slow, weary sounding ballads, especially with a lot of the backing vocals and the pianos that were more prominent than the sound of Gilmore and Mason put together. Vocals from Waters himself are brilliant, especially when he goes into a, an aggressive tangent and it shows his emotions, but Waters disliked his overall sound of his voice from this album because of what he went through in the studio. But I give Roger a lot of credit and it was personally a brave thing for Roger to think of something this personal. The overall negatives that I have with this album, however, some of the tracks really don't feel as complete as others, and they just feel bland and fillers. Some of it just feel unfinished, quite likely more so than some of the tracks on previous albums, which is quite controversial to say that. But I find some of the underappreciated material on the band's earlier works to be, I'd say, more listenable than on the final cut. The Hero's Return is not bad of a track, but I do like the overall heartfelt performances from Waters. It's not bad. One of the few is one of the weaker sounding tracks and also the opener to the second half of the album, Get Your Filthy Hands Off My Desert, which is nothing really that special to my mind. And the closing track, Two Sons in the Sunset, it is a decent closing track, but I think it fails to really fit in theme of the album. It's not as strong as some of the other tracks on some previous records, especially like Outside the World to Eclipse to the last parts of Shine On You Crazy Diamond. It does have a really good saxophone solo in it, but, you know, Two Sons in the Sunset as a closing track to me is not as great. Lyrical content at times can be really repetitive. It makes the listening for me. It doesn't feel connected with me as I wanted it to be. It does try way too hard in places and it just doesn't have like a complete listening experience for me because of the flaws that I have with this album. So as an album, the final cut is a very, very average listening experience. It really has some very, very good positives, but as the album itself from start to finish, it's just not what I would like to, you know, really call it as one of the masterpieces of Pink Floyd. In terms of a rating, I'm going to give this album a 6 out of 10. I originally was going to give it a 5, but some of the moments on this album whilst listening really grew on me. And I apologise for the out-of-focus moments from the, the camera. But needless to say, this album does have merits, but it just doesn't really gel to me as a really big Pink Floyd album in my mind. Thank you guys for watching and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.